Hey guys, this is Nico and Vince right here. Thanks for submitting your questions, and we can't wait to answer them. And thanks for, to Romeo for having us. That's right. Alright. The first question is, Maya from Germany wants to know what inspires our music. I would say, when people set, set themselves a goal, yeah. and go for it. People who reach for what they want and what they believe in, you know? It could be in any situation, any field. We did it in music. But whenever somebody sets out to who, who wants to who wants to wants to what you call it graduate into a bachelor what you, know, what you call it in English <laughs> bachelor right bachelor yeah, yeah, yeah. get a bachelor degree get a bachelor degree yeah. um and really achieves it that alone is an achievement yeah. that to us it makes us yeah, really I mean, it inspires us yeah just like everything anyone who said like just thought of something and said it and did it it's just that because they that's sort of like a testament that it's possible you know anything's possible. And that's how we hope that our our music and our and us how we can be an example of that as well to other people. So that inspires our music, and also like you know different artists like Bob Marley or Michael Jackson, like big idols that have really said something and stood for something as well. All right, Javaria from London. If you could be invisible for a day, what would you do? What we do? What we do? Uh, what we do? I mean, I mean, okay. So invisible, you could probably be with a lot of different people and learn a lot of different stuff, right? Yeah. You could be invisible. You could be in a room and with people that could really teach you some stuff that you yeah. that we can't get to right now, man. Yeah. I've I've always been a soccer fan and a, and I used to play soccer when I was younger and I've always yeah. wanted to be in the locker room of of a uh, of so let's say Brazil, for instance, and just see how the the, t the coach talks to the players and yeah. just see what happens back there. I always wonder what that's like. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so Benedicta from from Stavanger. Hey, Benedicta. See you, Norwegians. What's up, Norwegians? What's the biggest thing that have hap that has that have been happening to you the last year? Uh, I would for me, I would say seeing my so my song, am I wrong, my baby, on uh, on Billboard. You know, it's always been a huge dream to have something up there and to mm -hmm. see that happening now. It was, uh, it was very, yeah, I was super, super happy when yeah. I saw it on Billboard. Yeah, I was, I would still say that, you know, even with everything that has happened, I think the moment we're in right now, including the Billboard and everything is, I mean, it's like a highlight that just keeps on going. And so, I mean, it's crazy because you sort of like, St stuck in in great times. Yep, that's cool though. April from Seaside used the video app Keek to ask, "Why did you guys change your names from Envy to Nico and Vince?" Well, so we changed our names basically because we we've always had like this this thing where we want to be unique, you know, we want to be original and be us, you know. And so we we sort of discovered that there were too many bands in the world and corporations and computers and all that named Envy. So we thought, you know what, let's have something that's more personal, more us. Mm. And so we thought of Nico and Vince. Caleb from Omaha. Was Am I Wrong written based off a real life experience? Yes, it was. We were sitting in the studio one time and thinking about the fact that we've always had these huge dreams but we're from a very small country and it's not usual for people in, t in small countries to it doesn't happen often that, anyways that that people from small countries uh, achieve stuff like having a song on billboard um reaching out to the to a whole world with their music it's not it's not usual so people back home in Norway would always of course they would support us but then again they would doubt us a little bit because it, it hasn't been seen in a long time so we were sitting down in the studio thinking about the fact that are we wrong for believing that this can happen? Are we wrong for having this dream? Why can't we be on Billboard like Rihanna and Katy Perry, you know? Uh, so we sat down in the studio and wrote it down into lyrics and made a song out of it. Am I wrong? I Jennifer from Sydney asked us a video question using Keek. Um, would you ever collaborate with other artists if so, who? I mean, yes, but I think it would be just 
There's a lot of artists I like though. Like maybe um, for for instance, uh, I like uh, Sam Smith. Um, Sam Smith and, and Sharon. Sharon. Yeah, and Sharon. Um, Samfa. Uh, but I think whoever we would collaborate with, we just have to be like, just have that chemistry and that that um, that vibe with as well. You know, just really connect on a, on a personal level and and also with the music. And then I'm like, I'm open for anything. Mm. To be honest. So Jordan from New Mexico asks, what makes your music different from everything else that is out right now? I think when you're an artist, you want to be unique. You want to be original, right? And I think, and we have this mentality where we always said that if you want to be unique and original, be yourself. Be who you are because there are nobody out there like you. So what we've done is we've taken, we've just figured out everything we are as, as people, figured everything Figured out what I am, figured out what Vince is, and what we're together as Nico and Vince. Mm -hmm. And we have an African background. We have an urban background because we used to rap a lot before. And we also have that pop, Scandinavian pop type of um, background that we come from because we grew up in Scandinavia. And we've taken all of these things and just mixed them into this big melting pot that is Nico and Vince. Mm -hmm. And I think that mix of all of these things is something that's very unique. It, it hasn't been seen a lot out there. So just be yourself. And the song, and the, the song, and I'm uh, sorry, the music, and, or whatever you're doing, will be unique and special. Anthony from Paris, do you have any performances coming up on television? Well, actually, yes. Um, we just did uh, Jimmy Kimmel, which was like, wow, we just did <laughs> Jimmy Kimmel, and uh, so we got live with uh, Kelly and Michael. Mm -hmm. And then we got some more coming up as well. I, I think we want to keep those on the low for now, but we got we got some more coming up. They're coming. So you guys just got to watch TV all the time to catch <laughs> us. <laughs> Medley from Boston asks, I hear a lot of African sound in your music. Are you particularly influenced of that type of music? I would say definitely, yes. Me and my dad was an African musician, or is still an African artist, and um, that was the first genre I was introduced to. So when we sing... It's based off of those kind of melodies we learned when we were young, the melodies we've heard our parents sing, the melodies I've heard my dad mm -hmm. sing. Uh, so we're definitely very influenced by African music. We still listen to a lot of African music, like yeah. Azonto, uh, Senegalese music, we listen to Dombolo, if you know what that is. <laughs> we listen to a lot of different stuff. So yes, very influenced. Grace from Indianap Indian Indianap Woo! <laughs> Indianapolis. Yeah. <laughs> How did you react when you saw that MRO was starting to become really popular in America? I was like, oh, wow. Wait a minute. <laughs> it was like, I mean, it's because it's, it's sort of like seeing a dream you have slowly becoming a reality, mm -hmm. you know? And even now, it's like the things I used to close my eyes to see. We now see with our eyes open. It's 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 kind of it's it's kind of crazy. Yeah. Um. And it's hard to describe. But it's but you and I think it's even easier to look at everything that's happening right now mm -hmm. in hindsight. I think right now in this moment is it's hard to grasp everything. But I think when when like maybe like ten years when we look back at man, yeah. you remember that time we did? You can really see like the like the like the impact the song has had. Because right now it just feels. I mean, we too close to it. So yeah. I, it's hard to explain. Yeah. But, um, I mean, we, we definitely just live in a dream, and just to see that the song was becoming popular in America was, it was like, wow. Yeah. So Hank from Hayward, California, used Saturday Night on Online on Keek to ask, what is, the <laughs> what is the craziest thing that ever happened to you while touring? Hmm. I remember, I remember once we had Oh yeah, yeah, I know one. We had like we had uh, panties thrown on stage, <laughs> or what we thought was panties. We were standing on stage performing. Actually, am I wrong? And um, we had these these underwear thrown on stage. We were sure it was female underwear, <laughs> and we were like, "Yeah, we made it. We had panties thrown on stage and stuff." And we did the whole song. Came off stage, went backstage, and a friend of us came came up to us after the show, and he went. He said. 
Hey guys, you see that? You see that those panties out there on stage? We're like, yeah, man, did you see that? It was great. We had some panties thrown on stage. And it was that wasn't no panties, man. That was man boxer shorts. <laughs> that was man boxer shorts thrown by me. And we were like, ah. Oh. <laughs> so that was crazy. That's, that was, that was that's something crazy. I remember. Yeah. I also had this one though, like with one of the first shows we did, like in in 2011, 2012, 2011 actually, and we were at this festival. And I remember outside of, um like a like a bar, like a club or something. Just dancing, chilling, Nico was there, everybody was there, chilling. And I was just standing there cooling by myself. And then suddenly from nowhere, from from the from blind sight, this girl comes up and she just licks me oh, all over yeah. my face. <laughs> I remember And that. I was like, yo, like no words, no nothing. She just does that and I'm like What's nasty. going on? She's like she's she just looks at me, I'm like and I, I didn't have a girlfriend at that time. Must be said. But I just, I was just like, I got a girlfriend. And she was like, okay. And then left. And I was like, what is this festival thing? I was like, you. Yeah. <laughs> that was crazy. Vince is super nice. He's the kind of guy who can get licked all over his face <laughs> and don't get mad. Just I'm, walk I don't away. Know. I, I think I was shocked. I don't know. Yeah, you, you was in shock. You were in when shock. somebody comes up and licks you on the face like that with like no... Yeah. yeah, but anyway, thank you guys for submitting um, the questions for us. It was nice answering them. Hope we get more soon. Yeah, thanks guys. Thank you.